Many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. I was talking to a friend of mine named Rosia, and I said, Rosia, how are you doing? And she said, let me tell you something. Life is a mess. I said, girl, what are you talking about? She said, my life is a mess. She said, you know what? She said, I just was sitting up here thinking, I haven't lived. I haven't lived. She said, I've been working hard all my life, paying bills and taking care of my children, and my children are gone, and I've just been thinking, I haven't done anything. I said, why? What are some of the things you'd like to do? She said, travel. I would love to travel. I'd like to see the pyramids. I've never been to Paris. I want to go to Paris. I've never been there. There are things that I want to see, things I want to do. She said, I want to make a difference in young girls' lives, teenage mothers. I was a teenage mother. I want to be able to make a difference in their lives and see the impact that I had on their lives. And she learned, she, she mentioned a variety of things. And I, I remember a story about a lady who went to the doctor and she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And she came home and she was sitting at the table and, and she was drinking some coffee and all of a sudden she, she just looked up and, and she said, I refuse to die an unlived life. I refuse to die an unlived life. And she decided, that she was going to live. That up to that point, her life was for her family, for her children, for her husband, but she, she had left herself out of the equation. Have you ever done that? I, I remember at a period of my life, I was going to work and I was working on a job that I hated. And at the same time, I was praying that I wouldn't get fired. I was praying that I wasn't laid off. I was miserable. Nobody was holding a gun to my head, but I showed up every day and I used a flimsy excuse. Well. I got to pay the bills. I've got a car payment I have to pay. I have a family, I have children, I have a, a car note, and I have a mortgage note I have to pay. I've got to survive. I was showing up for a paycheck. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not living. And a friend of mine said, you know when people change? And I said, no. He said, when they get to the point when they say, I've had it. I've had it. I think the only reason that you're listening to me right now, the only reason that you're watching this webinar, that there's somewhere in your heart of hearts that you've said, as you looked at your life, you said, I've had it. And not only have you said, I've had it, but you said also in your heart of hearts, I can do better than this. And let me share something with you. You can. Because if anybody told me, and I'm, not, I'm going to share some things with you that I've done, not for the purpose to impress you, but to impress upon you what the possibilities are when you work on your mind and have mindset development. Because I've found that how people live their lives is a result of their state of mind. It has been said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. So part of the process, number one, is expose yourself to positive messages. See, what I'm doing right now, I'm distracting the story that's going on in your head right now. How you live your life, how I live my life, how all of us live our lives is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. And most of us are born into stories. I was born into a story where we were poor, but we didn't know it. I didn't know we were poor until I got on a bus with my mother going to do domestic work on Miami Beach. And when we crossed the Venetian Causeway and I saw those big, beautiful hotels, and I was in the homes with my mother making up beds and cleaning and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. And we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. And I kept saying, Mama, what is it, boy? As we got ready to pack up to go back home into Overtown and Liberty City and all the poverty and filth and the violence there, I said, why can't we stay here? Why can't we stay here? She said, Leslie, we can't. Why? Because we can't. Why, Mama? Why can't we? She said, it's just the way it is. Now, shut up. I was curious. I wanted to live like Mr. Sidersky lived. I wanted the big car that he had. I wanted that big home that he had. We lived in a two bedroom apartment. It was seven of us plus mama. He had a big mansion, just three of them, 10,000 square feet. I said, mama, what is it, Leslie? One day, I wanna buy you something just like this. My brothers and sisters, when we were on the bus going back, they were just engaged in playful things. I was thinking and dreaming. Mama didn't understand why I was thinking like that because I'd been exposed to positive messages. I had to take care of Mr. Sadursky. I had to shine his shoes and clean his office. And every day when he was listening to motivational messages, I was hearing those things too. Earl Nightingale, we become what we think about. All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. In order to be successful, you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Your mind is a machine. You must program yourself 
for success. Wow. When I heard those words, I said, wait a minute. I can program my mind for success. I can program my mind for wealth. You can too. Trust me. I've earned over $55 million in the last 28 years. Anybody told me that I would be doing what I'm doing right now? I spoke recently in Sweden. They paid me 40,000 euro for an hour speech. I had no idea that this Les Brown that you now see have the ability to do that. I used to work for the Miami Sanitation Department as a garbage collector. I used to be a janitor. I used to do door-to-door -door sales. I used to work for Sears in Miami on Biscayne Boulevard. I had no idea this Les Brown that you now see had the ability one day to give lectures at Harvard or Yale or Dartmouth University. I had no idea that this Les Brown existed. I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you. There is more in you, Simba, there's more in you than you have been expressing. All of us have seen Lion King, some great symbols in there. And I say to you, there's more in you right now than's represented in your bank account. There's more in you right now that's being reflected by your life right now. Your life is not a true reflection of your potential. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. There's a reason that my favorite book says, as a man think it, so is he. And as he continues to think, so he remains. In order for us to begin to break into that level of greatness that we have within ourselves, you have to make a conscious choice every day to expose your mind to positive messages. So I put myself on a regimen. I do this every day, and I suggest that you do it. Write this down. Number one, listen to motivational messages every day. I guarantee you, if you do what I'm sharing with you right now, for six straight months, every day your life will never be the same again. I guarantee it 100%. You listen every day for one hour to creating your greatest life, any of those messages, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. What it will begin to do is interrupt the story in your mind. It will override the story that you believe about yourself. It will distract all the negative thoughts that you have that's holding you back, that held me back for 14 years. When I used to go see the number one motivational speaker on the planet, Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins, and, and my heart said, I can do that. I love to help people. I'm just like my mother. And then my mind would ask how. And I went from my heart to my mind. And my mind would say, Les Brown, you don't have a college education. Les Brown, you've never worked for a major corporation. Les Brown, you were labeled educable mental retarded. They call you DT, the dumb twin. You're not as smart as your brother. Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and you convinced yourself that you couldn't do it? See, sometimes we need to have some external voices. And so by listening to motivational messages, that began to override the negative thoughts that I had about myself in my mind. And it gave me a new story and empowered me and gave me a vision of myself beyond my circumstances and mental conditioning and started me to writing a new chapter in my life. And so now, money will never be another issue for me. And that was an issue for most of my life because I did know what I did know and I thought I knew. So one you have to do is that you have to have a mindset development strategy where you are deliberately taking an hour every day listening to a motivational message every day. Here's something else. Read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. Why? And read it with conviction and, and stay focused. 10 to 15 pages every day. This is seven days a week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every day, McDonald's know that you know where they are. Burger King know that you know where they are. But every day they have some advertising. They have billboards. They have radio. They have television. Why? Because by exposing you to those messages, that will begin to impact your behavior. It will drive you into the place to purchase what they're advertising. Now you're advertising for your greatness. And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So you want to listen to positive messages every day. You do this, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. And read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. I read two to three books a week. Why? Because I have goals and dreams of things I want to achieve. I want my life to count. I want to make a greater impact. At this stage of my life, I'm working on my children's 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 education. A good man leaves a legacy for his children's children. So I'm working on their education at this point in my life. And as I begin to look at myself in order to achieve more and to do more, I know I have to work more in my mind. And let me give you an example how this works. The most money I've ever earned in an hour and a half, $260,000. That's the most money I've ever earned in an hour and a half. A lot of people work a whole month and don't do that, or six months. Then, and this is the next thing I want you to do. I want you to look at your relationships and I want you to upgrade your relationships. See, MIT did a study, and this study indicated that you earn within two to $3,000 of your closest friends. 
Not only did I start reading books every day and listening to positive messages, but I separated myself from my friends who did not have goals and who did not have dreams. Why? Because people rub off on you. It's called a mind virus. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. So when you upgrade your relationships, you got to ask yourself the question: Who is it that I need to associate with that I can learn from, that I can grow mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially? By aligning myself with another person that I can learn from, and Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. Whoa! Think about that. I was the smartest one in my group. Then one. Person called me who had been admiring me for years and said, "Les, I, I want you to coach me and my trainers on how to tell a story and create value for an audience. And I want to share with you some things. I want to teach you some things, old man." I said, "Is that right?" He said, "Yes. You always say you're never too old to learn, and you're never too young to teach. I want to teach you some things." I said, "Okay, I'm open to that." Now let me share this with you. He blew my mind. The most money, as I mentioned to you, I've ever earned. Speaking to over 8,000 people in Salt Lake City, Utah, 260,000 dollars. I did an event with this individual, just over 500 people, because of what I learned from him. Because I upgraded my relationships, I earned over 410,000 dollars in an hour and a half. I was excited, but I was also depressed because I've been speaking for 28 years. And I start thinking about all the money that I left on the table, all the hotels, the plane rides, all of the audiences I spoke to, all of the money that I missed out on because I didn't know that I didn't know, and I thought I knew. I was a big fish in a small pond. I can't tell you if you don't get anything else. You have to look at your relationships, and you've got to ask yourself the question. What is this relationship doing to me? See, has everyone, anybody ever seen something for you that you didn't see it for yourself? I didn't see that for myself. Maybe that's why my favorite book says, "Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you." Because of what He saw in me, He inspired me. He gave me a vision of myself beyond my circumstances, beyond my mental conditioning, and beyond the job where I was. Because I thought I was just a disc jockey. I love that. I'm master of microphone. You drop me in any city, I can master a microphone. I can turn a city upside down with a microphone. But I had more in me than I was expressing, and I did not know it. And because of this encouragement, I became a community activist. Because of this encouragement, I started doing a talk show called Voice of the People. Because of this encouragement, when I got out of radio, I ran for the Ohio legislature, and I was elected. And because of this encouragement, I passed 14 bills my first term. Because of this encouragement, I was elected three times and became the chairman of the Human Resource Committee. Because of this encouragement, I became a public speaker. Because of this encouragement, I became an author. Because of this encouragement, I did a show for King World called the Les Brown Show, and they paid me five million dollars, two million dollars, not to speak. Because of this encouragement, I produced specials for PBS, public television. They said you can't do that. You don't have a college education. It's educational television. Because of his encouragement, I did so many things I had absolutely no idea that I could do. I encourage you to live full and to die empty. There's more in you right now than just working on a job where they pay you just enough to keep you from quitting, and you work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. And when you make the decision. And identify that key area of your life that you need to make a radical change. Things will begin to open up for you. Now, here's the other thing that's very important. Once you identify your goal, I want you to get, if possible, a visual picture of your goal. My major goal was to buy my mother a home. I got the picture of the home with a 12-foot swimming pool and a basketball court on a golf course. I bought that home for my mother. It cost just over. Four hundred thousand dollars, ten thousand square feet. I had a picture long before I had the money and the down payment to get it. My goal was to be known nationally and internationally as a speaker. I had that goal. I had a card that I had on one side, asking it shall be given, seeking it shall find, knocking it shall be opened. On the other side, I had I'm the world's number one orator. 
I produced that result in my life. I had a goal of becoming a talk show host. I used to watch Phil Donahue, and I put my picture on the screen of the television as I listened to the program. I visualized myself there, and I was called by King World Production, and I had my own talk show. Well, it was the highest rated, fastest canceled talk show in the history of television. Well, at least I had one. <laughs> It's called life. Now, here's something else. You will fail your way to success. Trust me on that. You have a lot of failures, a lot of disappointments, but you will fail your way to success. Goethe says that which does not kill you will make you stronger. See, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. That's why you have to be of good courage. You have to have courage. When life knocks you down, I have a saying, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. So once you look at and decide the goal that you want, you want to put some things, put a treasure board or a, a goal board and have pictures of the goal that you want to achieve so you can see it every day when you get up in the morning and the last thing at night, you're programming your subconscious mind where nine out of 10 decisions that you make comes from there. Here's something else. Not only do you have, want a, a physical picture that you can see every day to remind you to keep you on course, but the other thing that's very important, achieving your goals, writing your goals down in detail and having seven action steps that you take every day. Robert Shuler said, by the yard it's hard, but inch by inch, anything is a cinch. You want to think about what are the things I need to do every day. Break it down into increments. You have your 30-day goals and you have your three-month goals and your six-month goals and your one-year goals, all right? You want to break it down in increments. What do you need to do starting today? Don't squander any time. There goes a second. There goes another second. There goes another second. And all the power in the world can't bring it back. So what are seven things that you can do starting today? And then once you do those seven things, then you work on all the other stuff. But what are the seven most important steps that you can take that can move you in the direction of your goal. And when I decided to become a speaker, I started memorizing quotes every day. That was one of the goals I had, to memorize quotes. I have probably over four to 500 quotes and statistics in my head in all kind of areas. I've spoken at the National Convention for the Real Estate Conventions, REMAX. I've, I've spoken for doctors and lawyers. I trained over 5,000 doctors last year, teaching doctors how to communicate with their patients to increase their taking of their hypertension medication, to increase their compliance from 30%. I've paid $640,000 in one month, Monday through, Friday, Monday through Thursday, 30 minutes a day. A lot of people work a whole year and don't do that. I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you. You've got greatness in you. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. I had no idea this Les Brown you see existed. I had no idea. And the reason that you're watching me now is because you know in your heart of hearts that you can do what I've done and even more. And so as you begin to think about that, think about writing your goals down, listening to motivational messages, changing your relationships, upgrading your relationships, thinking about seven things you need to do every day, some radical change you need to make in you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm.